All right, here we are, part three, uh, how to scale, grow your business, and keep expert care and at the same time. So in part one, uh, we talked about the, the big self-limiting belief that most of us have, especially early in our private practice careers, it's kind of like the professional syndrome and that's uh, I'm the best. And what that forces us to do is not turn uh, some of our responsibility over. Last time we talked about listing out, going through the exercise, so hopefully you've done that now. Um, in part two, we talked about listing everything that you're responsible for in your organization and then how to work yourself out of a job. That's, that's the big goal out of part two. And now I want to give you two examples this time about how you can think about and how you can uh, do this. Because really what you're looking for is you're looking for staff members. You're looking to attract staff members that not only can recognize problem areas, but they propose solutions to you. And uh, it, it'll be a huge load off of your plate when you start surrounding yourself and attracting really good people. Um, so anyhow, the first example is this. We had a, a physical therapist. So this week on uh, Tuesday, we did a promotion and we had 56 people come in for a free screen. 45 of those people converted over to a full plan of care. That is the highest that we've ever had and plus we're waiting on, so the 11 that didn't schedule, we're waiting on um, physician scripts and I think we have eight that are waiting on physician scripts. So we're really down to three people that we haven't converted. Really, really high conversion rate, super successful and we have one PT that, can, that saw 13, so saw 13 free screens and converted all 13 and his name is Dan. And what I did uh, was during our staff meeting, I said, hey, what did you do? And we stopped and we talked afterwards and he said, uh, well, you know, compared to other years, uh, just because I've been, he's in our inside circle group, he's, uh, you know, he pays attention to what we're doing in the BPTM world. Um, and he just said, hey, uh, I just assume that like, since somebody raised their hand, they called in, they said, yes, I want help. I just assumed they were going to schedule. Like I had no other assumption and I just proceeded through like here's the next step, here's the next step, here's the next step and probably in the past I wouldn't have done that as well. So Dan had this big thing on assumption and just assuming that the person wanted treatment. So what does that do? Well, if somebody had like a time consideration or distance or money, um, he just kind of like blew right through it. It, it wasn't that he, there weren't any barriers. It was like, oh, okay, so you need to come in early in the morning? Well, I start at seven on these days. You can come that time. So that would be like a time barrier. Or if it was money, okay, so what's your situation? Let's talk with billing. And he just like helped people overcome all those barriers because he knew deep down inside that ultimately, all those people wanted help. They want treatment, they want to get back to what they're doing. Um, now, Dan's an expert at using, uh, we teach something in BPTM called the Seven Step Killer Exam. We use it here and I mean, he just, he knocks it out. He's a rock star at that. But, um, and he said, this is the big change for me. So we went back and we actually looked and many years our conversions were really like 50 to 60%. So th Dan, in one year, just with this, putting this in, jumped up to 100%. So guess who we're gonna have teach our other physical therapist how to do free screens? Dan, guess how much that takes out of me? Just realizing that Dan's really good at it. And then what we'll do is we'll record that and we'll make it available, we'll put it into a video library for all of our other physical therapists that we ever hire here at Madden PT. It'll probably become part of Breakthrough PT Marketing as well and we'll get it out there in the private practice universe to other private practice PTs. But that just gives you an idea, it gives you a sense of like, you're sitting on assets already. If you're thinking that you're the best and you have to do all this, you're gonna get yourself in trouble. If you can find other people like the major league knows they need to do and the all-star has already done, if you can find really good PTs or really good staff members, really good team members that they go out and seek on their own. They begin implementing on their own. They're testing different ideas. And then when you hit something like this where somebody just rocks it, you say, okay, what did you do? Cool, let's record it. Let's record exactly what you did, why it's fresh, 
and then we can train all these other PTs. So when we have a new PT come in, when we have a student come in, anything like that, who are they going to train with? Well, they're going to see Dan. By the way, we have great PTs across the board, and I just want to give you another example um, here also. So we have, uh, so we have right now a uh, grad, uh, newer grad. She's been out of school for a year. Her name's Kelsey, and I'm using her treatment space right now. So thanks, Kelsey, and um, and then our clinical director is Joe, and um, we. So we, we were doing like uh, just a treatment audit and we just saw this one little hiccup and Kelsey's fantastic by the way, amazing technical skill and you know um, Joe was working with Kelsey and he just found like this one little blip and it was uh, you know they work probably 30 feet apart in the clinic and they've been working that close for a year but it was just like one little thing that Joe saw that he does that Kelsey wasn't doing and it wasn't a fault of her own or anything like that um, it was just being a new grad didn't have the experience yet and she um, she was doing this and it was just a habit and Joe picked up on it and he helped her out and it, it immediately corrected and um, so what she was doing is when she was doing an IE and she was doing the treatment plan presentation so the plan of care she would say, she would say, this is what I recommend. And the key thing there is recommend. And then Joe picked up on it and he went back and he said, well, here's what I say. He says, here's what we're going to do. And I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I know right here um, she was getting some patient non-compliance. So a lot of pushback on, well, I can't really come in three days a week. Can I just do one day a week or can I do every other week? And uh, you know, this is just a recommendation. It's much harder to support. And uh, Joe says, here's what we're going to do next. And the thing that he follows up with is, you know, you've said that you really want to get back to running again, or you really want to play racquetball again, or you want to be able to sit on the floor and play with your grandkids again. So in the beginning, we're going to hit this really hard, uh, and we're going to do three visits a week, and we're going to schedule out for two weeks or four weeks or eight weeks or whatever is appropriate with the prognosis. But it's we're going to hit this really hard in the beginning, and this is how frequent you're going to schedule. Like there's no, I mean, he's just leading the person through. Again, uh, digging deeper with Joe, like, you know, he said, I realize that the person has raised their hand, they said I need help, they've come in, they're coming to me for help, they view me as an expert um, because I can help them and we're gonna get a good outcome, but like, I, I'm in control now. Like I'm gonna help them through the process uh, because I know and they don't know. Uh, so here's the plan of care, here's what we're gonna do, and just you know, just like Dan said, very similar. Just assume that they're going to go through, and it's uh, you know Kelsey put that in, and she did an awesome job transitioning really, really quick. Just put this one little thing in, and then her numbers went through the roof in terms of patient compliance and her graduation rate. So really, really cool there. But again, this is uh, this is not me. This is an expert that we have on our staff who is really, really good. And I mean, I would put our PT's outcomes against any anybody else that I've ever heard with or talked with. Um, not saying they're, I, I'm just saying they're really good, high quality care PT's, which we all believe we have. But there's little intricacies um, that are happening in, in that first appointment that can make all the difference in the world between success or failure uh, on behalf of the patient. So Joe's an expert in that, um, and now he is teaching our other PTs too as a clinical director. So um, that is, in a nutshell, I know we've done three parts now. 
that is what you want to do. So um, you, you want to make a list, you know, realize if you're thinking I'm the best and you have to juggle all the balls, that they're all going to fall. You want to make a list of all your responsibilities and then you want to start turning things over. So I, I firmly know right now that me turning over the treatment to Mike Gilbert and Joe and Mike Fink and Dan and Kelsey and uh, Andrew are the therapists, um, Chris, John, yeah, uh, Charlie's in there, yeah. We, um, turning that over to other therapists, like they know more than me and I'm comfortable with that and I simply now, I just held on to a little bit of that admin metric marketing or uh, admin um, management, metric management responsibility so I can see what's going on in terms of the numbers and making sure our patients are achieving their goals. But I mean, they've taken this and run with it. And I just want you to think about this. If you studied every single day, two hours a day in, uh, in clinical treatment, just think about uh, like how much farther you would be in a year. Now, do two hours a day of clinical treatment and then also add in, so that's research, you're reading JMMT and JOSPT and doing online con ed and going to courses on the weekend and doing all that. So it completely consumes you. So you're the best therapist in the world. How are you ever going to have time to study marketing? How are you ever going to have time to study and implement the best financial systems in the world? How are you ever going to have time to study the best EMR and billing systems and know what's what? Um, and be as efficient as possible. That's never going to happen. And you know, you're going to have to turn again some responsibility over, work yourself out of a job, and that's how you grow and scale your business. So, hope that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for joining me uh, in this uh, three-part series on how to scale your business yet keep world-class care at the same time. And I'll see you next time.